What's going on guys? My name is Joe. This is the Dual Factory and in today's video I'm actually going to be bringing you a deck profile of something I've played at a couple locals and I've actually had success at two and not so, so much success as one. But I've been playing uh, Blue Eyes lately and I've been playing it since True Light came out of the Mega Tens about a month ago. Um, I mean to actually bring you the deck profile a little bit sooner but I just wanted to play a couple more like I wanted to play at least a total of like seven to eight tournament matches before I actually brought you a deck profile of it and show you what I've been messing with. Um, arguably, um, it is just a trap deck at this point, especially with True Light, but that's okay. Um, especially because a lot of the floodgates that you can play, there's a lot of effective floodgates you can play. The problem is, is some of the matchups they aren't very good against, so it's kind of hit or miss on that one. Like, for example, my Drytron matchup is absolutely horrible. But uh, Virtual World I thought was going to be my worst matchup, but it's not terrible. It has an okay matchup against Tri Brigade just because your monsters are naturally bigger than theirs. Um, Shrag is a little bit of a problem, but that's whatever. And then um, going forward, uh, post uh, Boat or Burst of Destiny, I'm actually really excited for that set to actually come out. Uh, mainly because it just changes up the format. I don't necessarily want to play anything from it, but it changes up the format a lot. And um, I think this deck might still be okay, so I'm going to go ahead and show you my current list because I do think it is Boat ready. Um, but enough about that. Let me just go ahead and show you the list and see what you guys think. So starting off with the main deck, it's Blue Eyes, right? So we have to play three copies of the Blue Eyes White Dragon. Um, not much to say on that one. Blue Eyes isn't like Dark Magician. You actually need the three normals in rotation at all time because you'll actually go through them really, really fast. And it being level eight, it also works really, really well with Nebula Dragon. Um, this is also my favorite art of it. That's why I'm not playing my LOB ones right now. So we play three of that, and then we play three other level eights that are not Nebula Dragon. So we play one copy of Alternative, one copy of Blue Eyes Abyss Dragon, and one copy of Chaos Dragon Levianir. Now, a lot of lists play two Blue Eyes Alternative. I'm going to be 100% honest with you guys. I think Blue Eyes Alternative is Cheeks. Um, so that's why I'm only playing one. It's revivable off of, what's it called, off of True Light. It can also be searched with cards like uh, Metal Deal, The Awakened Dragon. I'm also playing Big O Machine Go because that card says it can search True Light. So I'm playing that as well. Um, but you have plenty of access to it. I don't ever see myself missing it that much. I promise you one is probably the correct number. Um, I am playing one copy of Blue Eyes Abyss Dragon. So a lot of times in your deck, your me your most common turn one play will be Blue Eyes Spirit Dragon plus a back row and pass. And when you make it with White Stone of the Ancients, it actually allows you to summon this card. And Blue Eyes Abyss Dragon has this really cool effect where it can search a level 8 dragon in the end phase. So it can search Nebula Dragon. So you can make your Blue Eyes Spirit Dragon with a back row, search a Nebula Dragon for follow-up. And that's actually a really, really powerful play in this deck. Um, and the one Chaos Dragon Levianir, the card's insane. It can be searched off Melody. Um, in this deck, you're usually using its Monster Reborn effect a lot more than the actual hand ripping effect. Uh, not much to say there. And then the whole reason I think the trap version is more viable than the regular combo build is three copies of Nebula Dragon. So for those of you who don't know what this card does, I'm going to give you a quick tutorial on it. So you can reveal it in your hand and a level 8 dragon monster in your hand. Blue Eyes uh, Abyss Dragon actually also fits the bill for that, if you keep that in mind. And it can special summon the two of them and negates their effects. And for the rest of the turn, you cannot special summon any monsters like light or dark dragons. Um, the reason that's really good in this deck is because it gives us instant access to turn one, rank eight, such as your Glubion, number 38, Dengar, so on and so forth. Um, and that's really, really powerful in a deck like this because um, one of the best plays you can do is this in Blue Eyes White Dragon. Uh, summon your Glubion, and then your Glubion will detach the Blue Eyes that you use to make it. And then that will summon 38 with the material underneath of it, which also makes True Light live. With the blue eyes white dragon in the graveyard or if you have one in hand you have one vice versa but it's probably one of the this is probably one of the best cards to open with this and blue eyes white dragon is obviously the ideal two monsters in your hand in this deck um but that's it that's it for the big dragon component of it for the rest of the monsters uh your best normal summon is sage with eyes of blue it searches all your tuners um it also is another way to put a level eight monster on the board so that's why we're playing that um we do play master with eyes of blue Arguably, this card was better than we still had Ancient Fairy Dragon, but I am playing it because I'm only playing one Blue Eye Spirit Dragon, and this is a way to recycle it. Um, for the Dragon Tuners, we are playing three copies of White Sun of the Ancients. Your deck is a slow, grindy deck, so this ends up being one of the better cards in your deck because it, it puts big bodies on the field during the end phase, and it also allows you to recur cards like your Blue Eyes Alternative out of your graveyard, so you can summon them naturally the following turn. Um, and then we play the one copy of White Stone of the Ancients. You do need to play it because having access to the card is actually really good in the strategy. And then for the deck choice, I am playing one copy of Effect Veiler. Um, seeing if you already have like a stone in hand or something like that, it gives you something else to search or an interruption in the search when you summon Sage with Eyes of Blue. So that's the whole reason we're playing it. And then spell cards, we play a very minimal lineup. We play three copies of Melody of the Awakening Dragon. 
it is the most Ashable card in your deck. Um, the nice thing about this list is it's not susceptible to a lot of the mainstream hand traps. Like, yeah, like Imperms and stuff like that. Uh, Imperm Ash, uh, you know, you're never really getting rocked. Let's be real with this. This type of deck, you're not getting rocked. Um, but this would be, this is going to be your hand trap magnet, more or less. But when it resolves, it's usually game. I'm going to be 100% honest with you. Um, I am playing two copies of Bingo Machine Go. Uh, so for those of you who don't know what it is, you basically reveal three uh, essentially blue eyes monsters or a spell and trap card that specifically lists blue eyes white dragon on it, and then your opponent randomly adds one. Um, the idea behind this is we play two copies of it because True Light has blue eyes white dragon in the card text. So this is essentially a rota for True Light by revealing three. It also, if you if necessary, if you open this and Nebula Dragon, you can just reveal three blue eyes white dragons and add it to resolve your nebula, which is crazy, by the way. Um, and then the other spell cards are three copies of Traden. You just need consistency in your deck. And then the one copy of Cards of Consonants. Arguably, I've been thinking about cutting this for one for one just to give you more access to your stone, but that's neither here nor there. And then on to the trap cards. The whole reason I think this deck is playable at the moment, three copies of True Light. So for more or less what this card does, um, once per turn, you can activate one of the following bullet point effects. You can either special summon a blue eyes white dragon specifically from your hand or graveyard. Blue eyes white al blue eyes alternative white dragon does count because its card effect has it treated as blue eyes white dragon. Um, or you can set a spell or trap card that specifically has blue eyes white dragon or blue eyes ultimate dragon on it. Um, the other effect is while it's on the field, blue eyes white dragon cannot be targeted by tar card effects, and when it's destroyed, it blows up everything on the field or blows up player monsters. Um, this card is essentially Eternal Soul for Blue Eyes White Dragon. It's kind of crazy because now I'm bringing dragons back on my turn and I'm bringing dragons back on your on my opponent's turn, which is absolutely insane. Um, and then for the Power Trap cards, we play three copies of Ice Dragon's Prison. Um, this card just really, really good. Um, I don't know how it's going to be the upcoming format, but I've been playing it with like great results. The only card, the only matchup is really, really bad against honestly. Uh, it's two. The trap matchups are kind of this card's kind of tough, and then. Um, the Drytron matchup for sure, because there's just nothing good to, in Drytron to hit. Um, three copies of Psalm Strike, probably the best trap card. And then I play four Floods in the deck, so three copies of Gozen match. Of all the ones you could play, this is probably the best one. There is maybe an argument to play There Can Only Be One over this, but then you can't do what this deck does best by applying pressure with multiple dragons on board. Um, so that's why we chose goes and match instead. But like I said, the argument can be made to play there can only be one. And then the best flood in skill drain. Usually when you flood this, the game's over, especially when you're just putting big 3000 vanillas on board, like your opponents can't deal with that. And that was the main deck On to the extra deck. Um, for the synchro monsters, we are playing blue eye spirit dragon. Uh, we're only playing one. You're only ever going to need one in this type of deck. Cause like I said, it's a slow grindy deck. And uh, this card, even though it's effects good, I don't see the need for two, especially since I'm playing Massive with Eyes of Blue. Um, the monster it's mainly going to be summoning is this, uh, Azure Eyes White Dragon, for the, or Azure Eyes Silver Dragon. The card's actually really, really broken. It's essentially, this. It's essentially, if you think about it, it was True Light before True Light was a card, because it does revive normal dragons during the uh, standby phase. And then when it's summoned, it protects all the dragons and prevents targeting and stuff like that, so it's really cool. And then I'm also playing Black Rose Moonlight Dragon as a form of interruption for my spirit dragon but this card could probably get cut and then for the x seeds we are playing the 197 draglubion uh this card is really cool it brings out either your 38 or your numenon dragon depending on what the situation is um the main reason we play it is just like i said my um the big thing is i want true light live the entire time so this like i could make 38 but the problem is is the blue is that goes under 38 just stays under it it doesn't get detached or anything like that whereas if i make it with Draglubian, I can detach the blue eyes I used to make the Reiki, and then it's in the graveyard, making it set for True Light. So that's why I like this card. And then, we, like I said, we are playing the one number 38, and then we are playing the Numeron Dragon, depending on going second. Usually the Numeron Dragon comes out going first. 38 comes out, just depends. Um, I do play one copy of Galaxy Eyes Cypher to take the card. Galaxy Eyes Full Armor to put on top of the card I take and pop. And then Galaxy Eyes Cypher Blade to pop more cards. Um, I am playing one copy of Dengursu. It's non-targeting removal, and it's a rank 8. That's the big thing. And then since I am playing X Seeds, I also am playing one copy of uh, Zeus. Uh, at first, I didn't think it would come up, but it absolutely 100% comes up. If you play X Seeds, you need to be playing this card. I can't say much more about that. Um, and then we are playing four links and Link Karibo. 
Uh, the big thing with this one is if I open the White Stone of Ancients, not White Stone of Ancients, White Stone of Legend and Nebula Dragon, playing Link Karibo allows you to be able to resolve your uh, Nebula Dragon because it adds blue eyes and then you have a level 8 monster in hand. That's the main reason we play it. It also puts White Stone of Ancient in the graveyard too so you can resolve it. So that's the big reason we play it. And then I'm playing the Access Code Talk Package and Halka Fibrax, Selene, and Access Code Tarp here. Um, arguably, I've never summoned this monster in this deck just because usually the games are over before then, but you never know it could come up. But that was my true light blue ice deck profile. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. I do have a bunch of stuff coming in from Bode. I'm not excited to play any of the new decks. I'm going to be 100% honest with you. But because I have the cards, I'm going to profile for him. And I'm 100% going to have to learn Sword Soul because I spent way more for that deck than I should have. But don't forget to like, the com like, comment, subscribe. Check out our latest videos. And hopefully I'll be bringing you guys content more consistently. Peace.